Assalamu alaikum to some of you and peace to the rest of you. I'm going to go ahead and get right to the two points. The first point is that um, the violent hate crimes committed by some white men in the last few weeks, and I'm recording this on November 13th of 2018, um, are the very proof against what the uh, white conservative right is saying, whether it's the near right or the far right. They are saying that there is no white privilege, there's no white supremacy, there's no more racism, we need to get over it, stop talking about the past, and uh, stop crying. And they are even mocking and ridiculing what they call SJWs, or, or social justice workers, or social justice warriors. The acronym has two expansions, if you will. Some call them social justice warriors, some call them social justice workers. but. The acronym is always SJW, and this is actually used as a pejorative oftentimes by the right, near right or far right. And this um, right, both near and far, uh, extreme or moderate right, have uh, both said that it doesn't exist, these causes are not real. Um, these problems are not real and so therefore there's nothing to talk about. Now, the first point I'm going to make is that the violent crimes committed by these white males in recent times, recent weeks, are actually being, uh, they are actual efforts and, and attempts by them to protect the very same thing that their wing, politically speaking, is saying does not exist. There's no white dominance, there's no white privilege, there's no white supremacy, there's no racism, black folks aren't victims, nor, nor is anyone else. The system is fair and it is just and it is blind and it is unbiased. And while they're saying these things and they're saying that they don't see color and everybody's human and, and, and opportunities and rights are equal for all, these men are doing what they did in order to defend the very same thing that their political party is telling them and telling us does not exist people in general will fight harder and more often and more frequently and more viciously to protect something they either have now or had before. Something they have experienced having currently or previously, they will fight to protect or to regain more viciously than they would to gain something that has already been lost and they don't remember having. This has been proven throughout. This doesn't even require a study to know. Most of us would believe it. So, you can look at slaves who were kidnapped and slaves who were born into slavery and the records usually show that when they were um, born free, they were harder to uh, keep in slavery. And when they were born into slavery, uh, they were more easily maintained in slavery. Now, the records will show this. This was known in the U.S. This was known, period. This is known even in other species. So, it is a premise that many of us can accept. People will fight harder to either get back what they remember having or keep what they got than they will to get something they don't remember having. People can subconsciously remember having something and know they've got it while they don't consciously know it. And they'll still fight harder. Now that we understand this premise, we understand why I said that whites, white men now recently that committed these hate crimes were doing it to protect that which they know they have even while their political party tells them and others they don't have it. Got that point made. Got that out the way. Took me four minutes. Sorry about that. Second point I want to make is that we black folks need in order to even fully understand and explain things to each other that we understand have to start to attach political definitions to the words white and black. The, we have a genetic definition for them, we have a cultural definition, now we need to start attaching a political definition. The Republican Party is white. End of story. The right is pro-white. That's it. Moderate right, far right, extreme right, alt right, they're pro-white. The left, we must understand, is not pro-black. So we need to get rid of that idea that we can 
count on them or go their way. We need to understand. And when people say, where are you politically? We need to start being able to say, I'm black politically. And it needs to have a meaning. It must be understood. I'm black. So, um, this way, when, you know, either, when the, when the right begins to talk, then we can say, yeah, well, that's, you know, that's political whiteness speaking. And when the left begins to speak, we can say, yeah, that's also political whiteness speaking. It certainly is not any, any form of political blackness. So if they're standing up for the Latino community, we don't give a rat's behind. If they're not going to stand up for us. If they're going to stand up for the LBGTQ community, we certainly don't give a rat's behind. We don't even believe that agenda is beneficial for the black community. This must be understood. Political blackness must start with the understanding that anything not used to promote us, us specifically on, um, on the basis of one, well, on the basis of the fact that our race has been singled out for oppression. Not certain complexions within, not certain nationalities within the race, but that our race as a whole has been used and, and singled out for oppression by almost everyone else, with very few exceptions. They exist, but they're so rare, you can't really rely on them. Southeast Asians, as a rule, don't hate us. And they certainly don't have our harm in mind. I said Southeast Asians. Don't point to the Koreans, don't point to the Chinese, and don't point to the Japanese. I said Southeast Asians, as a rule. And the Thai, we're beginning to discover that they actually have some anti-black sentiments. So to hell with them too. Cambodians? No, they, they don't. Um, the Vietnamese? Not really sure. But the bottom line is that um, we have to say, okay, look, what does it mean for black people? And not just black people, what does it mean for the darkest, widest nose, biggest lip, biggest feet, nappiest headed Africans as well? And their descendants who still look like them. What does it mean for the blackest of black people? The most Western Central African looking of black people. What does it mean for them? And that's how we'll know what it means for the rest of us. Before we accept it into our um, uh, political acceptance. We must have this understanding. So that we're not tricked to follow people that don't have our, uh, even our, the interest of our justice at heart. Let's forget, if I don't say our best interest at heart, let's just say our fair and just interest at heart. If it ain't for them, if it ain't for those reasons, we say, you know what, we don't care about it. We're not interested in setting up something that's going to defend Latin Americans that aren't black and pro-black at that from being blamed for crimes they didn't commit. We believe they have the right to not be blamed for crimes they didn't commit, but we're not interested in defending them unless they are likewise interested in defending us and we have some demonstrable evidence of it. And if we don't, well, you know, what does the past evidence say? Most of the Latin American community is not pro-black. That's what most of the evidence is. Those in the Latin American community that are pro-black, they would already be with us anyway. We have to attach these political definitions to the term black and to the term white. This, is, this needs to be done simply so that we begin to understand more and we also begin, we can have an, an easier time explaining to our growing children more and more, our preteen, our adolescent and teenage offspring as we have to prepare them for certain things. Because right now, there is a cabal, there is a, a, an invisible hand and, and an invisible effort to socially engineer our people to not even want to marry each other anymore. And one of the ways this is being done is by convincing us that very few of us want to marry each other, when in fact, those of us who want to marry each other are a much higher percentage than what we perceive. But those of us who don't are a much louder um, platform and a much more exposed platform than what their percentage would actually entail because as we know sometimes faking it till you make it works sometimes starting the reputation can actually bring about the truth of that reputation as we understand look what happened to Morris Brown and Morehouse as examples 
Morris Brown was stereotyped. Eventually, the stereotypes became true because those who fit it were the only ones that would apply. Same with Morehouse. So they understand. If you can create a perception, then as life imitates art, the perception will then become true. Create a perception in art. Life will imitate it and make it true. Create a perception in life and art will demonstrate it. This is an easy trick to pull if you've got the resources and the control over, um, over what people see and hear enough times. If I had control over what a classroom saw and heard, period, no input from the parents and no input from the, out no input from the outside world without my previous approval, I would be able to control what the classroom thinks even if they were adults. Not because I'm smart, but only because I've watched it done enough times to see how it was done so I know how. That's all. I don't have to be smarter than them. I just, I have more experience and exposure and I paid more attention to it and that's all. It's like I told a student today, when a student today told me how other students might react to me not letting them cheat and me marking the maps and for using Arabic in, the cl in an English class. He said, well, you know, some of them might hit you. And I said, well, good luck. I'm going to win the fight. Not because I'm super strong or because I'm a hero. I didn't tell him what the reason was. I told him what the reasons weren't. No, it's not because I'm strong or because I'm a hero, but I'm going to win this fight. What I did not tell him was I'm going to win this fight strictly and only because I've seen how they fight and I'm already trained to beat off about two people at a time. I got an equal chance of, against about three of them. Four, I probably wouldn't, but four of them aren't. They're not unified to come up in a group of four. I didn't explain this to him. And it's the same thing here with controlling the way people think. It is actually much easier to control our minds than what we think it is. So therefore, our minds are more easily controlled than what we think, and therefore, we are steered in certain directions. And then before you know it, a previously false perception becomes true. In order to counter this, we have to explain certain things. In order to explain certain things, we have to understand them, and we have to have the vocabulary to explain them. And I recommend that we start with attaching political definitions to add to the previously existing genetic and cultural definitions of black and white. This is all I wanted to tell us. Sorry it took me 12 minutes plus to do it. I hope this has been a benefit. Salam alaikum.